At 12, the night beat starts right now. It's insane. It's risky behavior. And, and we're just not going to tolerate it here in San Antonio. A stern warning from San Antonio's police chief following the arrest of four teens after police and DPS busted a street takeover event. Yeah, that's when people block off an intersection to do dangerous stunts with their cars. As the chief tells our night beats Daniela Barra, authorities knew that group was coming. A stolen car wrecked out just after midnight at a QT on the north side. San Antonio police say covert units had been tracking it for miles. Those units, along with DPS, surveilled a street takeover on the west side, just north of Castroville Road and General McMullen. We knew, and again, there's, there's different ways that we uh, receive intelligence that, that they're coming. And last night we knew. Chief Willie McManus says street takeovers are a major safety threat. It's, it's a dangerous, foolish, reckless thing to do on public streets. Or, or, or in parking lots, you know, wherever it may be. McManus says new laws helped police impound three cars, all belonging to people charged with street racing. We are going to take your car and you're not going to get it back, not to mention that you will be arrested. And the danger of street takeovers goes beyond the road. It's dangerous. I mean, it's very, very dangerous. People drinking, uh, carrying guns, some of them, you know, some of the cars that we recover are stolen. Stolen cars like the one that crashed at the QT. Before the crash, police say they watched someone get out of the car with a weapon and mask and go into another store. That's when police say they started following the car and watched someone toss a handgun out the window. Police arrested four people between the ages of 14 and 18. The teens faced several charges, including evading arrest with a vehicle. Police also recovered three weapons, one of which is stolen. McManus hopes this thing serves as a warning to street racers. Don't come back, and if you do, you do it at your own peril. We're going to take your car, and you're not going to get it back. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police also investigating an apartment shooting that sent a 22-year-old man to the hospital. It happened just before midnight at a complex on Starcrest Drive, not far from Perrin Bindle and Loop 410. Police say... The man got into an argument with a woman earlier Friday night, and then later on she came back to find him and started shooting at him through a door to his apartment. Investigators say that woman still on the run tonight. The man who was shot is expected to recover. SAPD also investigating a shooting between a man and an attempted robber inside the Purple Dragon Cannabis Shop. This happened just after 3 this morning at the store in the 500 block of West Hildebrand. Police say the suspect went into the store and opened fire on the employee, who then pulled out a gun of their own and fired back. Both were hit and were taken to nearby hospitals. At last check, the suspect was in critical condition. The search is on to find the next director of San Antonio's Animal Care Services. 2023 saw an increase in severe dog attacks and a larger stray animal population. Now residents say they want to see more out of the department. As the night team's Avery Everett shows us, the city is now accepting applications and some neighbors hope the candidates are cut out to bring change. It's more than a crisis. Driving down the west side, dogs are just about on every corner. It's just an awful situation. Some have owners, others are strays. This has been a hard year, but it's time for an intervention. In a new year, neighbors say they're dealing with old problems. The city of San Antonio has a culture of not spaying and neutering, which has created a incident of just a mass amount of dogs running loose. But now the search is on to find the new head of animal care services in San Antonio. I want us to get in the front lines to curtail all this overpopulation of unwanted. The new year will bring a new director to ACS and applications for that position are now open. But after a year of multiple dog attacks and high stray counts across the city, animal advocates say this city is ready to see something new. We need somebody that has done a city before as big as San Antonio, if not larger, has cleaned that city up. And now we need that person to come in and clean our city up. They have the solutions. We need them. On the city's application page, the job description emphasizes a need for improving current procedures and developing a strategy that fits San Antonio. We reached out to ACS earlier this week and have yet to hear back over email. We've definitely seen it. Just a few weeks ago, we spoke to the current director, Shannon Sims, recapping 2023. He says education and enforcement 
should always be top of mind. If I could have every single animal owner in San Antonio do one thing, it's keep your animal on your property. Sam still has a couple of months left as director. Animal advocates in San Antonio say they're hoping the city considers a wide range of applicants. Because as they see it, strays and animals not being spayed or neutered won't go away. San Antonio is not a good place for animals. In reality, it isn't. There's so much neglect. Unless there's new action in this new year. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And we first spoke to some of the people in Avery's story during our Know My Neighborhood series on Dignowitty Hill. In that series, we talked about the stray animal issue on the east side. If you think your neighborhood should be featured in an upcoming episode, you can find details on how to submit your idea by scanning the code on your screen. What a gorgeous day around mm -hmm. San Antonio today. We started off cold, but it ended up being really nice with the high in the upper 60s. We're back to the chill again, but not before I got some beautiful pictures in about the sunset this evening. I'd love to share some of those with you. Here's a look at one of those pictures. This is over Bronig Lake. Thank you to everyone sending in these pictures. This is from Taylor McClelland on our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Love this one. Can you get more Texas than this? Cross Mountain, Texas. This is Canyons at Scenic Loop. And and love that pup there in the middle there at Phil Hardberger Park. All right, tomorrow we're going to wake up at 37, but it's going to be breezy and 65. Another gorgeous day. Then the changes start. Somewhat damp Monday morning. We'll talk about those rain chances. Very windy Monday and Tuesday. Gusts of up to 50 miles per hour. And I've even got my eye on some Arctic air soon. Those details coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Former President Donald Trump marked the third anniversary of the January 6th Capitol riot by casting the migrant surge at the border as the, quote, real insurrection. With a little more than a week left until the Iowa caucuses, Trump rallied supporters in the Hawkeye State with his claims that countries have emptied jails and mental institutions to fuel a record surge in migrant crossing, something that has no evidence of being true. Israel and Hezbollah terrorists are trading heavy cross-border fire. The latest shelling comes a day after Hezbollah's leader urged retaliation for the targeted killing of a top Hamas leader in Lebanon's capital earlier this week. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is starting his fourth trip to the Middle East in just three months in hopes of preventing further regional confrontation. And 50 million Americans are under winter weather alerts from coast to coast. Up to six inches of snow falling in some parts of the Northeast, while another major storm barrels towards the Pacific Northwest. Heavy rainfall was also reported up and down the I-95 corridor south of New York City down to D.C. And that is a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Still to come on the night beat, nearly two weeks ago, a clear alert was sent out to Texans asking them to be on the lookout for Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. In about 30 minutes, we learn more about how the clear system works and what it takes for one to be sent out. Plus, a concerned community neighbors on edge over fires burning in a nearby scrapyard. An update on our Monterey iron metal and recycling coverage and what's being done to put those neighbors' fears to rest. And getting grounded, more than 150 Boeing 737 MAX planes are no longer clear for takeoff after a cabin door blew off a plane over the Pacific Northwest yesterday. How long they'll stay out of the skies and how it could affect people flying here out of San Antonio. That's next on the Night Beat. The Federal Aviation Administration is temporarily grounding some Boeing 737 MAX 9 airplanes after an Alaska Airlines flight lost a part of its window and wall while in midair. The plane had to make an emergency landing and thankfully everyone made it out of that plane unharmed. ABC's Zoreen Shah reports on the near disaster. A frightening moment for passengers. An Alaskan airline flight flying with a section of its fuselage missing mid-air. Something rushed into the cabin and then rushed out. Shortly after flight 1282 took off from Portland International Airport bound for Ontario, California, an emergency in the air, a large hole developed in the fuselage causing cabin depressurization, forcing the pilots to turn around with 171 passengers and six crew members on board. Oxygen masks were immediately lowered. Passengers recorded that that part of the plane was suddenly gone. We are 
emergency. We are depressurized. We do need to return back to. We have 177 passengers. Passengers say they were terrified. In the moment, a lot of tears. I just didn't know what was going on. And I just feel the plane drop. And it wasn't like any other turbulence just because the masks had came down too. So that's when I knew like, oh gosh, this is something way different. Um, and yeah, I started freaking out. The plane landed safely in Portland with no injuries reported. The airline telling ABC News, the safety of our guests and employees is always our primary priority. So while this type of occurrence is rare, our flight crew was trained and prepared to safely manage the situation. A team from the NTSB will be looking into what caused this incident. One of the questions here for the investigators is going to be, uh, was that a, a mechanical failure or was that some failure in maintenance? The FAA says about 170 Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes operated by U.S.-based airlines will be grounded. Alaska Airlines had already taken the precautionary step of grounding its 65 737 MAX. All the planes will be inspected before they can return to service. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. We checked, and right now only one daily flight out of San Antonio International has been affected. That is the daily Alaskan Airlines flight to Seattle, which is typically flown in a Boeing 737 MAX. Well, if you saw a convoy of cars escorted by police on I-35 today, those hot rods were up to some good. Wheels and Wishes rides to benefit St. Benefit Jude's Children's Hospital. They do these kinds of rides back and forth between the Alamo City and Austin a few times a year. And everyone who rode on that escort donated a minimum of $20 to ride for a good cause. And I know that we spoke to them and mm -hmm. with all of these street takeovers, they want people to know that. It, it that's not good. them. Yeah, that's not them. Beautiful weather to be out riding yes. around in a car and a bike, taking a walk, doing anything. Gorgeous weather. Absolutely. And sweater weather in the yeah. morning, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, tonight temperatures have cooled down from the afternoon high. Here's a look at the time lapse in the almanac for the day today. Gorgeous mix of sun and clouds. We started off at 37. We topped off at 67. That, my friends, is a 30 degree jump from the start of the day to the afternoon. And guess what? We're going to do it all again tomorrow. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast waking up at 37 degrees in the early morning hours tomorrow. There could even be a very light freeze up in the hill country normal this time of year. Otherwise, we're going to warm up quickly 50 by 10. Noon will be at 59 and mostly sunny in the afternoon. You'll notice that the winds are going to pick up from the southeast sustained at about 15 miles per hour, but we'll see a few gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So a bit of a breeze outside, but when we talk about a wind gusts of 30 miles per hour. That is nothing compared to the winds we're going to be seeing on Monday and Tuesday. 65 for the high in San Antonio. It'll be 64 in New Braunfels, 68 in Del Rio, 60 in Rock Springs, 71 in Catula, 68 in Beeville, and 69 in Pleasanton. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? By Monday, it is going to be somewhat damp in the morning hours. We've got a brief opportunity, a brief window for rain. But by Monday afternoon into Tuesday, it's going to get very windy. And then finally, we'll talk about some Arctic air, at least some good signs that we're going to be seeing some Arctic air very soon. Weather set up for you. Big system off across the Northeast, bringing snowfall. Some of these areas in the Northeast getting their first decent snow in about a year and a half, two years. Meanwhile, off to the West, there's another system in its wake. This is the system that's going to be bringing us gusty winds on Monday and Tuesday. First, though, we'll see an opportunity for rain early on Monday morning. You can see in San Antonio, we'll see a few isolated showers, some areas of drizzle, perhaps even a rumble of thunder. But the biggest impact from this system is going to be the winds. Take a look at wind gusts across the state of Texas by Monday evening. We'll see wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour, not only all across the state of Texas, but also right here in San Antonio. Potential wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour Monday night into Tuesday day by the morning commute. It's still going to be breezy on Tuesday, but by Tuesday afternoon, those winds will subside. So what can you do tomorrow to prepare for the gusty winds on Monday and Tuesday? First, secure that lightweight patio furniture, even lighter trampolines and lightweight carports that are not really firmly anchored to the ground could end up getting knocked around. And by the way, I did this day. I put up my Christmas decorations, put away my Christmas decorations. So if you have those, put those away too. trees, 
trim those trees near power lines just in case you get one of those stronger gusts of wind. And then finally, I have to remind you that we're in the middle of mountain cedar season. So anytime we get a gusty wind from the northwest, Cedar is likely to increase. So after that front moves through with that opportunity for rain early on Monday, it'll be windy on Tuesday, but high of 59. Nice on Wednesday and Thursday. Then by Friday, it's going to get pretty windy as well behind a front. Then I want to talk about what we are watching. We're watching how Arctic air will likely spill across the United States. The first Arctic air of the season. It could enter into San Antonio the week of January. January 15th. So not this next week, but the following week. What would the issue be for us? A brief hard freeze. We're not talking about prolonged cold. So that's some good news. And I do not see any signals that would suggest ice or wintry precipitation. Just our usual hard freeze, first hard freeze of the season. Good to know. At least we can plan ahead. Absolutely. I know you guys have it on the app. In the meantime, hold on to your cowboy hats on Tuesday. They might blow off your head. But if you're a Texans fan, you might have been throwing your cowboy hats up into the air tonight mm -hmm. after they clinched a spot in the playoffs. Yes, a thrilling game and a win or go home game. Rookie CJ Stroud and Nico Collins answered the call. The Houston Texans are playoff bound for the first time since 2019 thanks to their big win over the Colts tonight. The top high school football prospects across the country and in San Antonio took the turf inside of the Alamo Dome today. We'll relive the action coming up after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Many people say the playoffs really begin week 18, and it's hard to disagree when we have a win or go home game between the Texans and Colts. First play of the game for Houston. C.J. Stroud launches a deep ball down the middle to Nico Collins. Collins gets in for an explosive 75-yard touchdown. Texans lead 7-3. Second quarter, the lethal duo generates another big play. Collins racks up the yak off the screen. And the Texans find pay dirt soon after as C.J. Stroud hits Andrew Beck for a one-yard TD strike in the back of the end zone. Houston goes into halftime up 14-3. to The Colts came out of the intermission with a much better feel for the game. After forcing a Houston punt, Jonathan Taylor makes a house call from 49 yards out. The Colts' two-point conversion was a success, so we are all square. A couple of field goals later, 17 to 17. Devin Singletary caps off the Texans drive in the fourth quarter with a three yard touchdown, though the PAT is no good. So with a minute left, Colts go for it on fourth and one down six and Tyler Goodson can't make the catch and that seals the deal. The Texans improved to 10 and seven, defeating the Colts 23 to 19, clinching a playoff berth in D'Amico Ryan's first season as head coach Stroud finished with 264 yards, two passing touchdowns. Nico Collins went a perfect nine for nine for 195 yards. So time now to root for the Titans over Jacksonville tomorrow for the AFC South title. The only other NFL game today the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Lamarless Baltimore Ravens. Ravens already have the top spot in the AFC locked up. So Tyler Huntley got the start and Steelers QB Mason Rudolph led the way to victory for Pittsburgh. Their postseason fate is now in the hands of other teams as they did all they could do with the win. The temperature at kickoff for tomorrow's Cowboys Commanders game is supposed to be 49 degrees, but tonight very rainy and cold. This evening, Larry Ramirez and photog Billy Caldera are in Maryland trying to stay warm with more on the week 18 tilt that has huge playoff implications. Yeah, thank you, Mary, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to College Park, Maryland, where the Dallas Cowboys will stay the night before they close out the regular season tomorrow afternoon at the Washington Commanders, and then things really get exciting with the NFL playoffs. All right, led by head coach Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys flew in today, and they arrived at their team hotel around 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. The math is simple for the boys. Beat the Commanders, win the NFC East, grab the two seed behind the 49ers, and guarantee them at least two home playoff games assuming the Cowboys win in the wild card round. Linebacker Micah Parsons was asked, how do you balance what's on the line Sunday without overthinking it? 
I mean, it should really just be the same. I mean, really, if you think about from week one, you're playing for the division, you're playing for playoff hopes, you're playing for Super Bowl hopes. So I really don't think anything has changed. We're playing for the same thing we've been playing since week one. So um, mentality or anything else should not be different. It's, at least for me, I'm treating this the same game as I would treat the Rams when we played the Seahawks. It's all fighting for the division, but now that you know we might have the lead or whatever it may be, it doesn't change that we need to go out here and get a division win. Quarterback Dak Prescott says he's treating this like a playoff game. We'll have more Cowboys Commanders tomorrow night live on Instant Replay. Mary, back to you in San Antonio. Thank you, Larry. Looks so cold. Kickoff is at 325. The Cowboys are 13 point favorites, but with so much riding on this game, I'm sure Dallas can't help but feel the pressure. Like Larry said, we'll have full coverage from the action on instant replay. All right, a full week of practices in San Antonio led us to the official kickoff of the 2024 All-American Bowl. A hundred highly touted prospects in the nation wrapping up their high school football careers in a high profile ball game inside of the Alamo Dome. James Peoples, a four star recruit signed with Ohio State representing Veterans Memorial on the East team. It's East versus West. Peoples rushed twice for two yards and caught one pass for four yards for the East team. There were many highlight plays to come out of the afternoon. One day we'll look back at some of them when they're playing in the NFL. West won the game 31 to 28 and like others with their respective teams, Peoples will next join the Buckeyes football team. The San Antonio All-Star Game followed for another display of great football talent in the Alamo Dome, featuring over 100 senior standouts from the area, including John J. QB Jackson Gutierrez, the Navy commit, who throws a beautiful ball off his back foot to East Central's Austin Vivier for the touchdown. Team Gold got on the board before halftime as Warren's Antonio Meza hits Johnson's Johnson King, excuse me, King Johnson in the back of the end zone. What an incredible catch and it's Team Gold scoring the rest of the way for the All-Star Game victory 25 to 7. All right, coming up later in the show, we'll preview tomorrow's clash between the 5 and 29 Spurs and 20 and 15 Cavaliers. Hmm. Facing the guys from the land. We'll look forward to that. <laughs> we'll be right back.